Brake safety is a pretty big deal. It always has been. But I think I'm safe saying that we take our braking systems largely for granted these days. And why not? They're robust and reliable. And with automatic brake adjusters and now air disc brakes, we really don't need to pay a lot of attention to them. Or do we? I'm Jim Park. This is HTT Talks Trucking. Every time CVSA holds a scheduled or a surprise brake inspection blitz, we hear about some percentage of the trucks inspected being put out of service for brake violations. Those out of service numbers have held pretty steady at around 20 to 25 percent for ages. Never gets better, never gets worse. Is there anything we as an industry can do to improve those outcomes? With Brake Safety Week 2022 now underway, we're going to put that question and some others to Will Schaefer. He's the Director of Safety Programs at the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. But before we begin, remember to follow and connect with us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of HDT Talks Trucking. My conversation with Will Schaefer begins right after this. Time is money, and that's why Catscale built the Way My Truck app. Your drivers can complete their entire way without ever leaving the cab. They'll see their weights on their mobile device or tablet, and scale tickets can be automatically emailed to you. With a fleet profile, you can save back office time as well. No driver reimbursements. And you'll have access to report data. Find out more at waymytruck.com. In honor of Brake Safety Week, we're pleased to have with us this time the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance's Director of Safety Programs, Will Schaefer. Howdy, Will, and uh, thanks for joining me to talk about this unique event. Good afternoon, Jim. Thanks for having me. So tell me, what is Brake Safety Week all about? I, I know there's going to be the usual enforcement activity at roadside, but there's an educational component to this thing as well, isn't there? There is. Uh, we've been doing Brake Safety Week uh, in some form or another, or Brake Safety Day. It started out as a, a one-day event, and it became a week-long uh, since the 1990s. And uh, our inspectors um, across North America conduct inspections of trucks and, and buses, and we, you know, we do check uh, some uh, the driver's license and registration, et cetera. And we, um, and our, our, these are our members that do this. And, um, and then they are checking the vehicle and they're specifically looking at brake systems. Um, and uh, they're gonna be, there's a, a sort of a public uh, publicity that we get out ahead of the event. Um, we announce it beforehand. And uh, we also have some material that's available on our website, you know, tips for drivers on how to prevent violations of brake hose chafing. Brake, brake hoses and brake hose violations uh, uh, is the focus area of our event this year. And what criteria do you use to pick that focus area? Is it something you've seen a, a track record or something in the past that says uh, this is a, a repeat violation that we need to try and tackle? Yes, we uh, so we have a committee that meets at each at our conferences. We have two conferences a year, and the committee meets, gets together, and discusses, looks at our uh, past results from inspection campaigns, and you know our inspections that we do, our members do uh, throughout the year. Uh, one of the things that we do is we look at you know what are the the top violation categories, for example. In our road check campaign, which happens uh, each late spring, early summer, we it's a three-day campaign, and and we look at that, and we can look at we, we get a result of the the top uh, the top out of service violation categories of in, of of vehicle components, and brakes is has historically been representing you know forty to fifty percent of the out of service violations are brake related. So brakes is the top, the top category overall in out of service violations. Uh, can you provide some statistics or some numbers on the types of brake violations that you're seeing at the roadside, like you know, uh, out of adjustment, for example, versus a foundation brake problem versus you know chafing hoses, for example? Uh, what seem to be the ones that rise to the top all the time? Yeah, I I can send you. Uh, maybe I'll provide you a, a kind of a list that I have uh, from previous campaign of the top brake violations. But yeah, um, out of adjustment brakes. So brakes being out of adjustment, um, uh, worn linings or uh, oil soap linings. If a if a wheel mm -hmm. if a, a wheel if a seal breaks and leaks oil, uh, 
lubricant around the brake linings, that would be an out-of-service violation. Um, cracked or missing components. So uh, I don't have those in, you know, in a, the, the top order, but you'll see those, and I, I can provide a list of those to you. Um, okay. Uh, there's a you know, variety of brake violations that, that would fit in that category. <laughs> All you have to do is look in the back of the uh, out-of-service criteria handbook, and there's some horrifying pictures in there of brakes with parts missing and stuff broken and dangling in, in midair. It's uh, all that stuff, you know, taken by your inspectors at roadside. So those trucks are out on the road playing in traffic. It's kind of scary. That's right. Um, uh, I mean, we we have in our, our um, library of images of some of the most egregious out-of-service brake violations, out-of-service violations of any category, uh, that's... Those are those are rare, but since we find them, it reminds us that we have to be out there looking for um, the, you know, most drivers out there, most companies out there have do a good job at keeping their vehicles in well maintained, but there's a handful that either neglect or or willfully neglect or or just forget to repair things, and we find those as well. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you said that brake violations represent about 40 to 50 percent of the out-of-service uh, violations that you record. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, over the past decade or so, maybe longer, the total out-of-service rate for everything seems to be around 20, 25, 30 percent, generally speaking. That number never seems to change, never goes up, never goes down. What conclusions can you draw from those numbers? Are they sort of normal failure rates for brake system components, or do you think that suggests that X percentage of fleets just aren't paying close enough attention to their brakes. I believe it's more towards the latter that that we have, you know, a uh, X percentage of of fleets. Um, l- let me say there's a combination of things. I think there's a combination of things that are leading to the the prevalence of brakes and violations. Okay. Um, one is that the carriers are there's some percentage of carriers that are. Uh, not checking, not doing the maintenance that they should be doing on a more regular basis. There's another category of carriers that are trying to do the right thing and do some maintenance of their vehicles, and they may not be getting the best service, uh, whether it's in-house or from a third party, uh, because, because um, you know, there's a shortage of, I would say, a shortage of quality technicians and mechanics out there. That's, that's known. And, um, you know, if you go and get your brakes checked uh, and they don't, they don't really know all the requirements, the regulatory requirements, they may not be checking for what our inspectors are looking for. Um, they're kind of looking for, well, uh, uh, looks like it has, there's, there's linings on those brakes. They seem to apply, um, meaning when they, you know, they apply the brakes, the, the brakes move and, uh, I, I, you know, uh, the driver hasn't complained of any, you know, pull to the left, pull to the right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, consider that good. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to speak disparagingly of, of brake technicians, but we do know. I, I know from many in the industry that have seen, um, even even technicians that are working on brakes don't really understand uh, a lot of the this just the violations, the, the requirement, the regulatory requirements that and how they are applied. You know, the regulations don't tell how to do and uh, how to do maintenance, but they do tell signs of they, they indicate, you know, if you have this violation, something's wrong and it indicates that it's not, you know, there's something that's not been maintained. And hmm. the technicians, I think, are working from a different book. They're kind of looking at, well, I've got this, you know, regular service to do these, the, this, this, this and this. But they aren't necessarily like measuring brake stroke of the brakes. Um, they're kind of replacing linings and adjusting them, and 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 then leave it at that. Um, and I, you know, I think that there's kind of a mix. Some sometimes it's neglect by the carrier, and sometimes it's they're trying to get it done right. And there's um, maybe just some lack of education among both, uh, you know, drivers and technicians. Mm-hmm. Interesting point perspective on that. I- I've been through a number of these things myself. Um, fortunately, I got through unscathed every time. I've always passed my level ones, but 
Uh, judging from the number of violations that we see coming from these events, uh, your inspectors are obviously noticing defects that mechanics and drivers don't. Uh, from the driver's point of view, you've just talked about the technicians. Why do you think the drivers aren't catching some of these problems before they get into an inspection? There's a couple of aspects to that. One is if if you gave me a driver or you know a group of drivers and you um, take take one of our instructors and have them go through with those drivers, here's what the inspection is and here's what we're looking for. If they really knew what we look for, drivers could find, I would say, a good chunk, a good fraction, a, a strong fraction okay. of the inspection violations that our inspectors find. If they did their if they did a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle, walked around and looked for the, the telltale signs of um, brakes being out of adjustment, brakes not applying. You know, if the, if a if you've got a, a a drum or a disc brake with rust on the on the brakes on the friction surface, um, even you know old rust on the friction surface, there's nothing applying there. And we find those our inspectors find those clearly. A driver could see that if they looked for it. Um, so, I think that in some cases, uh, drivers and and carriers. Um, or, or personnel who are looking at vehicles, they uh, they could be more informed and could spot things that that uh, our inspectors are putting vehicles out of service for. Mm -hmm. um, and in other cases, they're not even looking. So I think they, you know, like in other words, they they might look, but they're not knowledgeable, or they just aren't looking carefully enough. I think that some some pre trip inspections might be, let's say, a little cursory. That's a polite way of putting it. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. So, I mean, what can drivers do to, uh, you know, up their inspection game? Is Should they be maybe going through a, an air brake refresher course once in a while or, or getting some tutelage from their fleets on how to do brake inspections? Would that actually start driving these numbers down, do you think, if they had better training or awareness? I think that's part of it. Um, in... We do have, you know, our, our regulatory, um, the way that our regulations work, the driver is responsible for um, the condition of the vehicle that they're driving. Now, mm -hmm. there are some exceptions to that. There's things that the driver doesn't really have, wouldn't be able to identify. Um, and sometimes those violations are going to be applied to the carrier. But I would say the majority of vehicle violations that a, that a roadside inspector who doesn't use tools uh, doesn't use any wrenches or, you know, they don't remove components. They just mm -hmm. go down around the vehicle and visually and manually and, and audibly listen um, for conditions on the vehicle. Those things are something that, um, for the most part, a driver uh, could potentially see. I know that fleets, many companies don't allow their drivers to go under vehicles, to crawl under the vehicle. Um, that becomes a a you know an, an OSHA concern or a liability concern, a safety concern, or just a training. And drivers aren't trained to do things under the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Some drivers do do that and go under and adjust brakes. Uh, you know, before we had sl automatic slack adjusters, more more people went under the under the vehicle to adjust their brakes, especially on those mountain passes and yeah. on I seventy and I one would hope anyway. Yes, right. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I I think that. Uh, you know, back to your question, um, there are there are many things that the driver can can see and identify in a in a pre trip or or out on the road. You know, checking looking at the vehicle, and um, some of them may not be an issue uh, on that trip, but they should still report it to their their carrier uh, in their in their driver vehicle inspection report. Um, you know, hey, uh, looks like I have some chafing on this hose. It's not worn through. It's not blown up. Uh, you know, it's not a not an air leak, but um, this needs to be replaced. And that's the kind of thing that that uh, actually some of our state you know inspectors they also do audits, safety audits. And when you do a safety audit, there needs to be a, a, a kind of chain of repair command. Uh, uh, the driver spots something on a on an inspection at the post at their end of their trip. They document it. Um, in Canada, it's required that the driver keep a, keep that 
pre-trip inspection on hand while in, in route. In the U.S., it's not required to be on, you know, in route, but at the end of the day, you uh, literally, at the end of the trip, um, uh, you want to document any issues that came up on that vehicle. And that's, that's sort of a more of a process and procedure that, that mm -hmm. helps keep the vehicle in good working order. Yeah, and everybody in the chain of command knows the drivers made the uh, the observation, filed it with the fleet. It's up to the fleet to repair it. Um, at some point, the driver <clears throat> probably ought to be saying, well, no, I'm not going to drive this until you fix it or have it fixed. But that's a matter for another day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not your forte anyway. Uh, well, automatic slack adjusters are one of those things. They've been around since the mid-90s now. They're nothing new. And yet we still have people adjusting them. I mean, they're not supposed to be manually adjusted except when they're installed. And if they're going out of adjustment, that's generally an indication that there's something wrong with the foundation brake somewhere else in the brake itself, not not the adjuster. Eh, sometimes they go out, but not, not often. So at roadside, if you catch a truck, he's got two brakes out of adjustment, he's beyond the 20% rule, the truck is sidelined, can't go anywhere. What do you do? They readjust the brakes and turn them loose? It, it, is that solving a problem or is that just putting it off for another day? I've had a number of, a few inspectors tell me that, you know, they will tell the driver and say, you know, look, or let, you know, let's, a common scenario would be the, the driver calls roadside service or uh, uh, roadside repair, roadside repair. Yeah. Um, and let's say a technician comes out and goes, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust them up and you'll be good to go. I, I would say that that's, a, that's one of those cases where we have, we have technicians that maybe aren't as well educated about what, how these brakes work as they should be. Um, yeah. or, or they know how the brakes work, but they, they uh, you know, just simply adjusting the, the slack adjusters so that they, in that one brake application, they appear to be within adjustment, it hasn't addressed the underlying problem. Why were these brakes out of adjustment? Um, maybe there's, you know, bushings are worn, the S cam is worn, the, the, uh, the rollers or the, uh, the, there's no lining in the, you know, the, the lining is worn thin, uh, the brake, you know, the, the brake shoes are loose, the drum is cracked, the drum, the drum is worn out. Um, these are all possible reasons that the brake was out of adjustment mm -hmm. when the yep. brakes were applied. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, now in in real life, um, when an inspector goes to look at those brakes and they are in adjustment because they've just been adjusted, even though they are automatic slack adjusters, there's no violation anymore, even though we know yeah. that it could go 10 miles down the road and they've readjusted to being out of adjustment, um, meaning or the, the adjustment issue is still there. Um, Inspectors may tell the driver, hey, you know, having these adjusted is not fixing your problem. You got to tell your company that I can't stop you. You've you've fixed the condition I can identify, but um, you really need to take these in for service. Well, thanks. Um, I think we have to wrap up there. We've probably gone a bit over time as it is, but uh, great insight. And I appreciate your frankness and uh, coming on the program today to talk to us about it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We've been talking to Will Schaefer. He's the Director of Safety Programs at the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. He joined us from CVSA's brand new headquarters in Washington, D.C. Please remember to follow and connect with us on social media. You'll find links to the various platforms in the podcast description. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future episodes of HDT Talks Trucking. This podcast was produced by Bobbitt Business Media. I'm Jim Park. Thanks for watching. Thank you.